Okay, welcome back to session 16 on combined loadings, and this is our second part. In this portion of the session, we're going to discuss the superposition of normal stresses and look at how we can go about, sorry, I moved a little fast, how we can calculate out what the state of normal stress would be at a particular element. So here is the general procedure again. Section the material, determine the normal and shear force components. In this case, we're looking at normal components. Determine individual normal and shear stresses. In this case, we're looking at normal stresses. And then we're going to add normal stresses to each other. Okay. And as a review, here are our possible sources of normal stresses. Once again, we have an axial load on a bar. We have a bending moment, which causes a bending stress. Or we have thin-walled pressure vessels that can give us a hoop stress or give us a longitudinal or spherical or stress associated with a spherical uh, pressure vessel. So let's let's do an example now. Let's imagine that we have this beam okay, with an internal bending moment and axial load as shown. So what's the, um, oh, I guess I should have, <laughs> it's really, um, what is the, um, uh, let me just change this. This is, yes, there is an internal bending moment associated with this problem, okay? Um, we'll say this is applied bending moment though here. Okay. All right, bending moment and axial load is shown. So M app, F app. And we'll say that the beam has width or base B and a height H. So what does that, that mean? That's, that's saying that if we look at the cross section, we're going to have our width B here and we're going to have some thickness or height H. And we're interested in the state of stress at A and B, okay? So this is A and B along the beam, and this is it at, these are A and B all at a selected cross section. <clears throat> so at this point, you, you might not need to think too much about, okay, what's happening at the slice and doing all those steps, but let's recall that the first step when we perform uh, the, discovery or the, the exploration of what an internal bending moment and internal shear force would be is to calculate out equilibrium on the entire structure, right? So looking at the external structure. And so here it is. External structure, we'll say that the reaction force is on this left side from the wall acting on the beam. This is the load applied to the beam, and it's becoming kind of well, maybe hopefully, you know, at this point, um, clear that the uh, FL is going to be equal to F app, uh, ML is going to be equal to M app, and that in the beam itself, we're going to have these internal bending moment or and shear force uh, and normal force or axial force all being constant. The shear force, well, it's going to be zero. We'll show that in a minute. The bending moment is just going to be m app, okay? And so we can we can do the, the free body diagram here, right? We see, okay, there's no shear force, so that one can be equal to zero. M app is going to be equal to ml, okay? So that's what we we see here. Uh, like I said, the internal shear force is equal to zero, and the internal normal force, okay, this N is just going to be equal to FL, which is equal to FM. All right, so, you know, you might have just seen all that instantaneously, but if not, um, you know, go back and, and review some of the other things we've discussed and, and statics. Now, we're going to discuss what the stress components are. So if we looked at that procedure, right, kind of take a selection, take a slice, all right, so we've done that, that's nice. We've looked at the internal forces and, and moments at this slice. And now we need to put some 
stresses okay on this at this location or at these specified locations due to these internal internal loads so let's look at what n might be doing what is n well that's this axial force here and what is the what's the stress from that well if we have a cross section which we do it's a nice cross section and we have a normal axial force f app then we can think about how that normal axial force is causing there to be axial stresses at a and b in this case the force is acting this way and so the stress at a and stress at b is going to be are going to be the same and they are simply n divided by the cross-sectional area or in this case n divided by b times h that's the cross-sectional area so that's a normal stress right now let's look at stresses from the internal bending moment so we had so we said that m is equal to m app and let's look at stress from m at a well there's a bending moment okay and so is that going to put a in compression or in tension it's on the top it's bending this way it's going to be in compression right and we can use our flexure formula for this which is negative my over i and you know sometimes i just forget or i don't think about this minus sign i just think in my head is it in compression or tension and i'm going to adjust the sign appropriately but it's nice when the math also dictate the same thing so here y is h over 2 okay that's so that's up here right and it's half of this height and i is bh cubed over 12 okay and if we plug those numbers in we get a negative sigma uh, and that's going to dictate that we're in compression as we see here okay and so we've now figured out what the normal stress due to bending the m app the bending moment is at location a what about at location b well we just said that's going to be in tension okay and we can use the same exact formula but what changes well the y is going to change now our y is minus h over 2 it's down here and the math tell us that it's going to be in tension again sometimes i don't even write the minus i just look at the problem and i say okay my over i i can figure out and is intention or comprehension and then i put the sign i make the sign work out but it's again nice to be careful and um, use uh, the the appropriate quantities and get the sign to work out here we have same thing we just showed copy and pasted now we're going to look at the stress profile okay from these different loads from the n and m and here if we we take the slice right what's the stress look like it just looks like a bunch of sh 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 coming out the slice right that's that's sigma n and we look at the stress profile from uh, the bending moment m we get something that's a little bit different we get a maximum compressive stress okay well here okay but I'm, I'm, it's going to come out here um right so, you know, so it's saying that okay it's going to be maximum negative okay? and so we often draw it out like this in this direction and then it's going to be maximum positive positive on the bottom that means it's in tension so we we kind of have this the stress profile and it kind of gives us an indication that well if we're going to superpose these normal stresses on each other sigma n is going to be causing it to be in tension while sigma m on the top is going to introduce a negative component it's going to reduce that amount of tension potentially putting in compression but on the bottom it's going to be even more tension than it was initially okay because 
this is positive and this is positive. So how do we go about drawing this or, or characterizing this state of stress? Well, it can be a little bit tricky, but it's often important to, how do you say it? Pick a location, well, or it's given to you, and then think about what the orientation of that location or what orientation at that location would allow us to draw the stresses that we've come up with. So in this case, it's fine to say, and, and this is a simple case because this is just normal stress. We're just dealing with normal. You'll see in, a, in the, the, the next um, portions of this session that it gets significantly more complex. Um, but I can essentially take this element and I can essentially just draw it kind of like this, okay? And that's kind of oriented exactly how this element is, okay? And X is going to the right, Y is at the top. So I know my stress, my normal stress is in the X direction, so I can just go ahead and draw it in as, as such. And I can say that sigma A is equal to what we calculated or is, is equal to the summation of these two, these superposed sigma n plus sigma ma, all right, and that's a minus 6 m app over bh squared. B, similarly, okay, can be drawn and can be looked at in, in this way, okay? And I have x again going to the right and y going up. Could I have looked down on this beam or looked up at the bottom of the beam and made that element? In this case, yes, it would either would have been fine. We only have our sigma acting in one direction. So it, you're not going to be wrong, okay, if you picked uh, a different surface to, to look at. And in fact, look, these A and B are kind of in the middle, so maybe it does make sense to look down and up. At any rate, here is sigma b drawn out in the x direction. I made the arrows a little bit longer because I know that there is longer than what we had for sigma a because I know that I'm now adding two positive to each other and so it's going to be even more tension. It's possible that sigma a would go negative, right? And if it does, this answer is still correct, but it would have negative, right? And if I had numbers and this came out to be negative, I could flip the direction of this arrow, make it go inward, and use a magnitude that's positive. Okay, But obviously, depending on what f app and m app are, or, or you know, depending, yeah, depending on, on what the parameters are in the system, b, h, f app, m app, right, it's going to be negative or positive. But in this case, as long as f app and in the b case, as long as f app and m app are positive, we're going to be in tension. Okay, so here's the second question for this portion of the session. And what we have here is a normal stress at location A. And we're going to say, okay, it's in the x direction. And it's going to be due to this load P being applied not at the, at the center, right, but at an edge a distance a from a neutral axis. So take some time, think about what stresses we might superpose to be able to describe the normal stress in the x direction at this location a. Keeping in mind, okay, that this p is coming in this way, and the way we define stress, it's drawn here, okay, if it's going in the positive, if the weight's drawn going in the positive direction, and if this ends up being in compression, the resulting value could be negative. Okay, great. See you uh, in the next portion. Thank you.